and uh, Bobby Simpson. He and Randy Rose at Dan the Green, 1981. Blew my was mind. There. I was hooked on that from then on. So was I, and that was, was an there. amazing show. In the daytime, too. Do you remember that? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. And we have a question from the Steve Esquivel from Skin Lab interview. Minotaur. Hey, Zet. Been meaning to ask. Since you watched your dad tear down and rebuild bikes, did you or your brother ever get involved with that or into riding motorcycles? Yeah, I mean, I have a Harley now. I mean, I, we did our whole lives. We rode forever. My brother, when he was 19, built a 69 Sportster and showed it in the uh, Oakland Roadster show. I think he took, like, third place, too. So he has a paper clipping of it somewhere. But, yeah, we followed up, and then my dad definitely had us in the garage. Yeah, I got a 2006 Dynaglide all custom now. All right, this is from Craig Lucero. Love hearing Steve's story. One of the most genuine Bay Area dudes, and I will attest to that. He is. Uh, Minotaur, yeah, I can definitely see getting intimidated by Andy Galleon. Was a witch at the drums in such a young age. I really hope you can get him into the vault. Working on it. We are working on it. All right. And Kevin Leonard from the Horde of Torment says, Zet, I ride an 04 HD electric ride, matching HD sidecar. Singing while riding is fun. I write a lot of melodies when singing on the bike, and I can only hear my voice inside the helmet. Do you That's ever do good. I don't listen to the. I don't really, but I don't listen to music either. I listen to the rumble of the road when I ride. And be more aware because it's a little... Uh, very much so, yeah. I don't listen to You realize to that it is dangerous. You can get lost in your, into a song and then all of a sudden you're singing a song and you should be paying attention. So I, I, Not I, saying I, that I, he I, does, but I, yes, I, I get I, you. I, for those that like to listen to music when they ride, good for you. I just choose not to. All right. Flasbury 4 from the Hatchet interview. Saw Hatchet supporting Raven in Shetfield last year. I have every Hatchet album. They are amazing. Having everything by potential threat. They deserve so much more. Great band. Both those bands are good Bay Area bands. And yep. they're... Yep, and we're doing another Bay Area one right now. We're doing another set of Bay Area uh, uh, up and coming so real soon. So stay tuned here in the vault. You'll get more of that. Scary stories to tell in the dark episode movie review. I do wish it was rated R, but since it was based on the book centered on more for kids and teens, I think that they showed a lot for a PG-13 and said things I didn't expect in a good way, and I still I agree. enjoyed it. I agree. I thought that the dialogue was a little bit over, kind of ruthless. It was cool. And, I mean, for PG-13, they stretched it. You got to see good monsters. I liked it. Again, I, I gave it a good review. I liked it. Anthony Rivers. I saw it Saturday with the old lady. She did not like it, but I thought it was well done. It's, it's like that with that movie. It's like that with any movie, so you have to just be like, you know, you know. All it's right. what you like and what you dislike, you know, so. All right. Now we move on to Matt Camacho's episode and Celeste Altus. Rest number one fan. <laughs> That's true. Uh, rest in peace, Yaz. Yes. What a character. Nothing is the same without him. It's true. It's true. We, we um, who was I talking about with him recently? I was talking about, God, it was just such a. Uh, yeah, that's right. Dave was in. Dave Dave White. Thank you, Producer Wayne. Dave White we were talking about with Yaz because he was just in. He actually, I remember when I was hanging out with Chuck and, and, and Ernie and Andy and Willie and Greg when we were younger, there was a time where uh, Andy was out of the band for a minute, out of Rampage, and they got Yaz. And then Andy got back in the you band. Know, he's a character. He was a character. He used to wear that. Remember the trench coat he always. Oh yeah, wore. yeah, the <laughs> black duster, exactly. <laughs> but he was Thought always he was in, in a mafia. good mood, though. Warren and Glass, he was a good. Do you know what good I mean? Heart. He had There's a good hard, heart. You know, yes, you see Yaz sometimes. I love just, Yaz, and I miss him. He's always upbeat, bad. right? Yep. And one thing is, after he, um, after Heathen was no longer. I bought his bass that was in his videos. It was the Blue Jackson, uh -huh. and I gave it to my cousin. But I had a piece. I should have just kept it, you know, because I don't think well, my cousin I has that. it anymore. All right. And we have N Night 3. Matt's commentary on a cemetery job is super interesting. I mean, that and is you know what? My girlfriend, Vicky, she loves that whole mortician, would love to have a job at an... 
I don't it know takes if a I'm special person. Telling you, that's some morbid shit there. But you know, you know, Matt, if you really know Matt, he's the kind of guy that's so low key and he's compassionate person. So he's the perfect person. You you know, it's a, it's a he's time of it's a hardship on people to go with your mother that have just passed away and have someone try to like do a deal with you. Right. And he's the perfect go between on that, I think. Anyway, so. Um, Rally one twelve says, "Hey Zetro, I was wondering why you guys don't ever play Verbal Razors live. It's one of the coolest songs I've heard. If you ever come back to Australia, you need to play it. Thanks." I don't pick the set lists necessarily. I do push for certain songs. That one would take a lot of. Um, since Rick Hunolt was the guitar player on that, along with Gary, and basically lately we've been using Craig and then and then Lee's in the band now. It would seem a little bit of inappropriate to do that with those two, but but if uh, you go to YouTube love the song. and look at, yes and put Exodus at the London Astoria, I filmed that. It's on YouTube, and you can see that song live. And they were I filmed it. Everyone, well, you know, you know, Craig and put that up on the Exodus thing, so I have he to film and he filmed it. Okay, and uh, Reeks Freakston three says they they are so good. I love. All of these. I'm a truck driver, so if you ever make a podcast, that would be perfect for me. Well, you can listen to this, obviously. You know, it's kind From of From YouTube. Fun I do that a lot. A lot of people say that they do that. I just felt that it was better to have a visual because you can see facial expressions. Everybody does a podcast, but not everybody's doing a webcast necessarily. All right. And we got Metal Heart. He wants to Metal say... Heart. Just... What I think every time I see these movies, they should do Ozzy or ACDC since they are legends. Metal doesn't always get a good nod. I mean, if you saw that uh, this year's uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees, Judas Priest, um, Motorhead, and uh, Thin Lizzy have made the ballot. Regardless to see if they make it in or not, we'll see. But uh, And it even says on there, you know, the not so metal happy Hall of Fame, which is true, you know, of any other genre, it's probably the least amount of bands in there. But uh, I, I think that happens to go with the movies as well. It'd be great to see Ozzy. Come on, what a story that is. That's true, and that's what I'm gonna. This is from the Bionic uh, Bio movie. The people say Kiss, and they mention Randy Rhodes, Venom, Lemmy, Exodus, Thin Lizzy. There could be, there's a lot of them. There's a lot are, of them out there, baby. There's good stores, but, you know, Serious. everybody likes tragedy also, too. Well, right? and I think every one of our bands have had that, so, you know what I mean? In so, some way or another, all these bands have gone through it. you got to have a death. We've had a death. Come on. That's true. Okay, and Elliot Wiss. I know it's not metal, but I'm guessing the next uh, one's going to probably be Nirvana. Anyway, so. Doubt it. <laughs> well, it's kind of these documentaries have been coming up of uh, I mean, you know, Kurt I Cobain think he's and his my death, show, and, not me. And you know that's a maybe good, that's a good we'll topic see. because people love a good we'll conspiracy see. theory, right? Well, so if you I don't believe that in one, that conspiracy, no, theory, I don't either. He shot himself. Sorry, all for right. Whatever reason. Um, someone also said that they should do Paul fucking Bailoff. All right. Would be, but believe me, I lived it. It would be fun if they could really tell the story. Wow. <sighs> All right. And... Be a six-part miniseries. Okay, and we have. Um... We done the last page of them all, Walt. Right. Yeah, well, unless you want to, you know, ride a dead horse. We ain't gonna ride it. We just gonna <laughs> kill it. We ain't gonna ride it. All right, and then this is. Uh... From, I guess, the making of uh, Pleasures of the Flesh. Fantastic album. I've got the Silver Edition on CD, which is remastered. And from the first time I listened to it, I loved it so much. And that's interesting because I had asked, I have the same thing. I know you do. We have the Silver Editions. But um, I asked Gary one time at his party, his birthday party, if it was really remastered. And he denied that it was remastered. I'm not quite sure if it is. It sounds the same to me. If it's remastered, See, I don't know. know. And I think that I, I, if it's remastered, then it's remastered beyond my, I don't know. You couldn't tell, though, right? I couldn't tell. So he denied it because I think you'd have to come to Gary yeah. to remaster anything. Yep. 
So it's just a marketing ploy, huh? Maybe. In a nice pack, but the packaging's nice. You know, the extras you get there are nice. good. Very nice. The stickers and everything, <laughs> sure is nice. Kind of like, uh, well, we could talk about the Japanese edition, like the Force yeah, of Habit. Yeah, huh? when they gave you the little stickers and the booklet and all the cool stuff. The yeah. Force of Habit is, a, is yeah. a totally, a collector should have that. If you're into Exodus and like that album, the Japanese version yeah, is definitely. amazing what yeah. they give you. The, the Digipack is amazing. So Here we go. And... Uh, someone says, fuck yeah, Anaheim Celebrity Theater, 7189. That, that was a blast. Yep. And then uh, my stepdad made me sleep in the backyard after he got home from that one. That's DD Danister 6. But that was It was worth it, show. wasn't it, bro? That was a great show. So you had to sleep in the backyard. We were just talking away. about this before the show. Yeah. That was in 89, and 89. Forbidden was the uh, support. Yeah, they were support. Mm-hmm. And that was a killer one. Actually, you can see some of my footage on that, too, from Get Thrashed. It's in there. And that's that's Walt Morgan, everybody. Walter Morgan, cameraman, interviewer, merch guy. Here we go. Uh, Everything you get. Well, this goes, in, this goes in that vein. Jive Turkey 6 <laughs> says, looking forward to the John Tempesta episode, killer drummer that played on one of the most underrated Testament albums as well. Yeah, well, John's and we're going to do an impact, right? That's when yes, he started probably next for you, one. right? Probably next one's up is impact. All right, and then Garden of Serenity one. I bought that record when it came out. I played it to death. Being an L.A. Latino thrasher, yeah, like the, the Satanic Panicas. <laughs> I know who they are. It was awesome to listen to Low Rider, the the thrash version. I went to the warehouse record store to get my copy signed. It was during the Headbangers Ball tour steve you're the only one in the entire band that showed up for that signing that's true Is that i remember true, that huh? yeah well that shows how you're dedicated there you go and uh and then he says that anthrax acted like a bunch of pricks and were in a bad mood oh well you know i was in a good mood i can guarantee that I halloween that. was nice and Steve, you were very cool as well. As a kid, you never forget these things. See, now this happened when this kid. Right, I know. And That's he still thinks I, of it to today. Right, because so I. So it makes it an know, effect. Right, well, how you that. act with people, I know. you yeah. understand that, you know right? Me. I'm. All right. Friendly to the fans, very congenial. Here we go with uh, the Steve Smythe episode and Great. Matt Hanchuk three. One of the all-time greatest sweaters of metal. Steve is amazing, not to mention an all-around great and humble dude. Uh, I mean, awesome talent. Um, I, I think we're playing, my ACDC band's playing with uh, Union Jack and the Rippers real soon, and he plays a part of that. Steve's so talented, great teacher, great player, great technique. He uh, also has a tribute band, the yeah. Sabbath, that he does yeah, every yeah, year. That's right, he does. does it selected, now that he lives back in Santa Rosa, so he was, yeah, yeah. you know, come back, so. Good. And here's a good question. Nikos Marianis says, hey, Panic was a great actual thrash band from Seattle. You know the guys? I sang on the record. Okay. I sang on, they did a, a cover of I Stole Your Love by Kiss, and I sang on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the choruses. So if you listen to the Panic record, then you will hear me on that. And then I remember that because. Because they were being managed by Tony and, and Rachel at the time. At the, before that, you just come through. They were from like Seattle, and you played like. They were from Seattle, yeah. Panic, the Paramount, right? Yep. Was mm -hmm. it? Yep. And that uh, you saw them, and I think Gary, or who was it? That wasn't you? me. It was Tony Isabella. Okay. The, our management that was all over them. And you yep. can still find it. It's, it's a rare album, but and I, I got it somewhere. And I Kisses, I Stole Your Love on that record. So if you listen to the chorus, you'll hear me. All right, that does it for this set for of questions. Well, leave us some more comments. Leave us comments on the comments, and obviously share this channel. And uh, we'll, well we're waiting for the P.O. Box to kick in, right? I think we've gotten some P.O. Box. P.O. Box is right here. If you want to kick something in, it's right here. We've already got it. And People we're starting to get starting some to get mail some stuff, here. getting some mails coming in. So we're going to do an episode of that. So be that we, if you, you will definitely get it read. If you send it a P.O. box and toys and all that stuff is definitely And plus, well we still haven't picked the winner to see a movie with us. That's uh, well, we're working on that, though. Yeah. We're working on that. Anyway, so you guys, uh, uh, definitely uh, subscribe to our channel. and we'll, Yeah, well, we'll you do you the soon. comments, and we read the best ones. Yep, yeah, you got it. See you soon.